On Thursday, February 9th, the monthly city council meeting was held at the Eva Halls building past the city park. The extensive agenda included many things, such as an updated budget report provided by Gilbert and & Gilbert and Embryon Watts regarding the yearly audit. This year, a single audit was given, and no budgeting errors were found. Okay, so you guys have got an unqualified opinion. That's the best type of opinion a city can receive from an auditor. Okay, so that's very good. Uh, you'll see uh, a deficit figure of $5,939. Under fund accounting, that's how the city did for the year. Okay, so in effect you can say, what did we do? Well, we pretty well broke even. Okay, whatever we brought in, we pretty well spent this year. Uh, the city is not in the, in the business of making a profit every year, right? The city is in the business of providing services. So some years you will have a deficit, some years you will have a profit. This year, just a little bit of a, pro a loss. Uh, so when you look at this balance sheet, you see that total assets uh, were only, uh, let me find it again, I, I went from one page to the other. Total assets were $767,000, okay, mostly made up of cash. But as I mentioned, this year we had to do a single audit. And that's because you all expended over half a million dollars of federal funds. Uh, the grant uh, for the extension out here and, and the grant for the uh, uh, Kentucky uh, Copper, those were federal funds. That puts you all over the limit, so you had to have a single audit. Um, in regards to that, we found nothing uh, of issue. In other words, you got to clean bill of, of, of health on, on that portion of the audit. So that too is a very good thing. We'll now go to uh, Ms. Debbie Ops. A budget report was also provided regarding the Boys and Girls Club by Deborah Hall. In the presentation, Hall updated the City Council regarding a $1,500 budget extension that she was issued. She stated that the funds were used to extend the snack program and purchase accelerated reader books. She also stated that the number of kids that are served by the SNIPE program has increased from 137 to 260, and regular attendance has also increased from 67 to 90. So I thought feeding uh, the kids for $100 a week, considering that in the last two months we have increased from serving 137 children to serving 260 children, uh, that we did really, we're serving 260 children now. From 137. From 137 this summer when I originally <coughs> came before you and asked for the increase, we currently have 260 members and doing homework. Now, we don't have all 260 of them showing up every day. We went from an average daily attendance of about 67. Uh, this week, every day, we've had in the high 80s to 90s uh, showing up. So. Um, I just think it's the programs. They know every day that their kids are going to get off the bus. They're going to come in. They're going to get a healthy snack. The last sheet is the money we spent to purchase the AR books. And um, you have not heard a lot about the reading program yet because the Big Blue Chair hasn't been delivered and it'll be here next week. And that's when we're going to start our Big Blue Reading Chair where we're going to be inviting folks from the community to come in and read to small groups. So, um, so that's where we spent your money. Um, our salary for the month of January is reflective of what it stayed, uh, which is $4,583.75, and that's about what it was. Chief Billy Phelps had several interesting issues to present. To begin with, he proposed that road race and parade permits be mandated in order to establish the number of attendees, which streets are to be closed, and establish fees. For us to have our officers come out and do this. And there's been these races before where they've not had seven, eight, nine people involved in them. And on top of that, we're locking off, they'll leave the park and we'll take them right through the middle of 231 and some main streets, which is another traffic hazard on, on top of everything else. So I was, I come up with a way I think will better that, potentially better that idea that be a $35 prepaid fee. And I come up with that because it's not high, but it, at least they're putting something in for us to spend $240 for us to show up out there and then them not 
only have 20 people. Phelps also proposed the implication of a wireless emergency notification system in which anyone who signs up for the free service will be either notified by text message or automated telephone call when any number of things occur. He went on to say that this system could be implemented regarding weather, flooding, game cancellations, and even an active shooter or hostage situation. The system would cost the city $4,900. I'm going to try to be able to break it down so you understand. It's a mass notification for anything that we may be doing. Not just the police department, the city of Morgantown. Say uh, there's a, uh, a water boil advisory. Something happened at the ball fields of a storm. Say something happens at one of the factories. There's a road blockage. The mayor wants to call a call meeting tomorrow. So you got a runway. Job over. You've got an active shooter at the school. Uh, we can we can text each teacher, each room, each student. Everybody wants on it. Okay, this is what you got to do. I'm just telling you, it's unlimited what you can do with with a mass text. The city council agreed to involve the county government to assist in paying for the system. The budget reports were also given by the council. This year, twelve thousand dollars has been spent on fireworks for the catfish festival, as well as hiring a licensed pyro technician. The council was also addressed by representatives of the Little League team regarding the time frame of the dirt application on the fields as well as construction and the dugouts. We went forth and uh, built the uh, bat racks, the hammer racks, and the glove boxes and got everything going on that deal and the two new doors. Uh, so we was kind of asking if some things could be fixed by then or... Well, actually, practice will start mid-March. The last order of business was addressed by Doug Odell regarding the poor condition of the Walk of Honor and Courthouse statue. Repairs were discussed and repair plans are likely to be made soon. To read the full story, please visit www.beachtreenews.com.